or presentation that I think will be really, really interesting. And we will discuss uh, the climate uh, change. I mean, how can we actually see what we are doing? Not only us, but in a bigger context. So our next is all about a global platform for climate collaboration. Uh, climate v View was actually created to accelerate the great energy transition. It allows nations, cities and organizations to visualize their climate roadmaps and turn them into action. Are you ready for this? Yes. Are we ready for some action? Yeah. It's turning into action. Uh, let's give a big hand for our next presenter uh, for Climate View. Big hand and welcome up on stage, Tomer. <laughs> past year, I have gone from having more, having climate anxiety so, so deep it's been close to paralyzing, to actually having more hope and energy than I've had in my entire life. And that is not because the situation for the climate is any better, but because it's been so clear that I share the sense of urgency with people in all levels, in government, in cities, in businesses, people, NGOs. They share the sense of urgency and so many are prepared to act in entirely new ways and try things they haven't tried before. And I'm going to tell you two stories now that show a bit of that. It'll be the first of the lean start of a startup, and the second, of the first of a new start for how a nation, Sweden, is going to drive its transition to a fossil free economy. Now, my background has been in, um, as I worked as a coach, a, a consultant, coaching businesses uh, with what one calls agile transitions. Now, I'm pretty sure quite a lot of you here have heard, used, talked about Agile. Um, but I'll give you a summary of what that's about. So, Agile is basically how you build an organization that is good at tackling complex projects and problems. Now, with complex here, we mean big problems where we have lots of stakeholders, lots of things going on, uh, many, many dependencies, and above all, the probable solutions are changing all the time. So as we try and find the solution, the solutions will be changing. That's complex. So how do you build a company, an organization that is good at handling complexity? Well, that's agile. So the basic principles are pretty simple. You first of all make sure that everyone has a clear, common, shared goal where you're heading. And then you divide your company into small, nimble teams, which are pretty autonomous and can attack the problem from different directions simultaneously because we don't know exactly where the problem is going to lie, the solution is going to lie. And then you make sure that all these teams constantly realign and meet. So you build up a rhythm. You build up a rhythm where people, where the different teams meet up and they align towards that common goal. Because what one learns is to build, to ch try and tackle complexity by uh, taking, like, taking long pr uh, project plans or writing long, long dis descriptions of, of how, to, how to do things is not going to work. Because by the time you have handed out the plan and uh, handed out all the instructions, everything will have changed anyway. So you have to find a different way. Thus, setting up the goal, setting nimble teams, making them align to each other all the time continuously. And the trick for that, when you do it, is very often to try and create a joint visualization, a joint map, a joint picture of the big picture. So as an agile coach, what I'm very often doing is trying to somehow create a, a way for the entire company to see where they're standing, see where they're heading, seeing how they're doing towards that direction. And when that happens, things, magic starts happening, things start to align. So as a consultant, that's doing pretty well. 
It was okay. But something was nagging me. If this agile thing is so good, why use it to try and put up profit margins slightly for a company instead of using it to solve the most complex and important problem of all, the transition of a nation to a fossil-free economy? So I wondered, what, what would happen if one just slightly megalomaniac, I must say, we just saw Sweden as one, Sweden's transition as one big agile project, just decided to go that way. So I quit all my customers, actually except for one, Vattenfall, I'll come to that. And I started thinking, okay, Sweden is my client, what should I do? It was one problem though, Sweden didn't actually know they needed me. I was going to work on that. So I did what one does, the first thing we do when you come to a new client, you try and say, okay, well, there's lots of things going on here now. Uh, what's actually happening? Where are you? And it, there's often, there's lots of stuff written. There's lots of project documentation. There is things going on. So in the case of Sweden, we actually have some pretty hefty reports telling us how to transition to, the, uh, to a fossil-free transportation system and a few more good reports here. Now, the problem about these is, of course, there's lots of good stuff here, I must say. There's lots of very interesting stuff, but of course, the second this is published, it's not accurate. And above all, this is not very actionable. Y you can't send this out to all the different departments and the companies and say, guys, here's the plan, let's go fossil-free transportation system. It's not going to work. So you have to find a way to make that stuff actionable, which also means constantly changing it. So as I said, I did what you do with, your, with a client, you sort of collect all that data. And actually, my first prototype of the digital tool was this. This is Lean Startup. So basically, built, you're not going to be able to see it here, but I'll talk a bit about it. Built a poster which was summarizing this. Uh, summarizing Sweden's transition to a fossil-free transportation sector, where the Top, top rows show our emissions, and then going down here in rows, showing the different strategies in place to attack those emissions. And then in the bottom here, there are lots of post-it notes, small notes, which is the collection of every single action and policy in the government pipeline just now to try and fix our transition for, to a fossil-free transportation system. This was prototype number one. Uh, built that and then I started going around to different government departments and remember I had nothing to do with climate then I was an agile coach and agile they probably thought was dog training or something and I started showing this and at first it was it was such fun because I came high level meetings with people I never knew I rolled it out and people say this is fantastic this is really great hang on who should do this who 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 has the big picture is that like the prime minister because uh, you know we we our job is this so this part here our job is that part there nobody actually has has the big picture and I must say this is the same for any company or organization you work with uh, you come in you do some big plan everyone goes hallelujah first but then you think hang on there's what how who's going to do this big thing uh, because to do that it's not a question of doing a visualization it's a question of actually changing the way you work so I went around to government agencies, got a lot of hallelujah, but nothing really took off first. But then I showed this to Vattenfall. This is a nice part of the lean startup story. Uh, Vattenfall said, this is really great. We did some experiments with their data. That worked really well. And say, this is really good, but we can't do this. We're a company. This has to be Sweden. We want to build a dashboard of Sweden's transition that we sort of try and share with everyone, with the people. So Vattenfall, and the strategy manager literally took these posters and went to the different government departments and said, how about we build a dashboard of a Sweden's transition together? We do a pilot, let's test this. And oh, by the way, we have some startup from Umu here that can help us actually do the IT platform. So that was the beginning of the lean startup. And we actually started building this platform with the government and filling it with data. So that's the start of part two. So what's actually happening here now? As we take energy, energy department, Energimyndigheten, Naturvårdsverket, and Klimatpolitiska rådet, the new Swedish Climate Policy Council, 
and literally collect, and it started in August, to, in, in August this year, August last year, and started taking these books, these materials, to create one big overview, and there's a room in Naturvårdsverket where we've collected the data and created one big overview over Sweden's entire transition. So this is the digital version of the poster. I'm going to show you the, how it works. So you have Sweden's emissions. We have the, potentials, the potential solutions to, to reducing those emissions. Indicators that show how things are going. And all policies and measure in place or plan to be in place for reaching those potentials. So basically, the facts of how things are going, the leadership of what we're doing, and indicators showing how well we're going along the track. So I dive in here, and we see Sweden's emissions. See, the width here of these columns are the proportion of emissions. We have transport, industry, agriculture, energy. And I dive into transportation. Here comes to most people's surprise. You see, actually, personal vehicles is a much bigger proportion than goods transport. And that little part on the side there that you can't see, that's domestic air. But that's the emissions. This is just facts. This is just basic statistics. Let's now look at the solutions. So this is how we plan to reduce our passenger transport by road. 10 tons of CO2 every year. By reducing the energy use and renewable fuels. So you see a much larger proportion of the solution is actually not electricity or biofuel. It's using less energy much larger proportion. 70% of the re reduction is by using less energy. This, to my surprise, comes to a very big surprise to people very involved in, in, in the transition of the transportation sector. But this is how the plans look. How do we reduce energy use? We create a more transport-efficient society. We build things closer to each other. And we reduce transport by car. Um, I'll dive down into the hierarchy. How do, how do we reduce transport by car? Well, one way is increased proportion on public transport. I'll dive down there, and there we see how things are going. The green line shows the track we should be heading to, re to reach the potential of reduction we had politically have agreed to. The black line shows how we actually are doing, and we are 18% below target, and for some reason also dipping. I'm just a messenger here, but this is how things are going. And then what we see here is all the policies and measures in place to try and reduce this. I'm not going into the, I'll just, uh, you, it links all the way to the government laws. We have something called urban traffic targets. We have something called state parking tax, flexible parking ratios, uh, review tax deductions on travel expenses. Um, I'm not a judge of policies, but I'm pretty sure that any one of you in here reading here is going to say, that's not enough, but this is the facts of what's in place, and this is just open data being presented clearly. So this way, we can dive down to lots and lots of focus areas of Sweden's climate policy. And maybe most important is, this is going to be an open website. This will be available to all on the 12th of June, actually. And imagine this as a kind of Wikipedia. So a bit more controlled, but basically a Wikipedia, where organizations can start to give input and feedback to the actual plan, but in a very uh, precise manner. So how will this hopefully change and speed up our transition. Well, first of all, we can now share a picture. All of us in here, entire society can be involved in the actual transition and not read those thousands of pages and see how things are going. We can see where the gaps are. We can th see where things are going well. We can see what policies are in place, and we can put pressure on the decisions that need to be made. But also, as I said, it's a feedback platform. So now, Naturskyddsföreningen, Världsnaturfonden, etc. NGOs and companies can start 
giving feedback on policies and measures, which will be shown to everyone. So when I give feedback as a company, I'm not only showing it to whoever's reading it, I'm showing it to the entire population what I'm doing. And of course, having a digital platform like this, it's much easier to start evolving your plans because those books there, already four year, years old, this is going to be updated every month. I was talking about Agile. So what's going to happen here in Sweden is that Klimatpolitiska Rådet is setting up an editorial board, which every month, here the sprints here, is going to update this dashboard so we have a continuously correct, updated view of where we stand. But it's a view that will let us easily see the gaps, easily see where we want to make changes, and then evolve the plan. And do it again, month after month. So in essence, we are driving a rhythm for Sweden's transition which hopefully will be a lot, a lot faster than the way things have been working so far. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tomer. Uh, amazing. Uh, and I, I was wondering how huge can this be? If you want, if you should make a wish for you, how big should it be? Should the whole world use it? Yes. Of course. <laughs> simple, simple question. Simple Leading question. question. But actually, one, what one notices is that the, when we have done this for Sweden, the actual structure, the actual hierarchies, it's not that different for Norway, Germany, whatever. So basically, instead of rewriting all those books for every nation, yeah. we can start copying from each other and start comparing how we've set up the plans with each other okay. and starting competing. Yeah, competing is good in this case. Yes. So w do you see any challenges? What, what's your next step? Is there uh, anything you need from the audience or wh which, what do you? Uh, w well, e engineers and UXs, but apart from <laughs> that, um, <laughs> yes, it's um, uh, the, ch the challenge is that this, this is a software as a service. It's, it's a platform, but really in a sense, it's it's actually a a visualization to try and form a new behavior. It's 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 a way to uh, to to make people think in a new way, and that's a lot of work. Yeah. So it's a bit of a trick. First step, you say, "Oh, hey, here, this is great. It's a platform, uh, and everything will solve itself." No, it doesn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a tool, but it's a tool to facilitate. And for us, our challenge is to find a good way to scale this. Mm. It's I'm actually much more hopeful. Oh, sort of more. It looks much easier to scale now than what it looked half a year ago. Yeah. The rate in which new people pick it up and actually get the mindset mm. is much faster than what we're dead hopeful. Oh, that's amazing. So let's say it has been a lot of discussion about behavior and mindset to actually use tech trends. I think we should stand up and give an applause, standing ovation for you. Thank you so much, Tomer. And I had a plan with that, so thank you.